everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and today we have a totally different type of video lined up for you guys. Now, the fact of the matter is that if any of you know me from anywhere at all, it is most likely going to be in my role as a medical student and soon to be resident physician. But outside of that role, I'm also involved as an amateur scuba diver slash underwater videographer, especially when it comes to large aquatic predators. Now, what I wanted to do today was give a recap of one of my most recent and amazing assignments to date, as well as offer some tips for anyone else that is looking to make the trip in the future to go and see the Norwegian orca migration. And let me just say, this should be at the very top of every adventurer's bucket list. <laughs> update we just checked into the hotel here in Tromso which is in Norway's Arctic region we're about 300 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle and I think technically this is one of the largest cities um, in the Arctic region now other fun facts about Tromso is that their population is somewhere around 78,000 and then also I flew into Oslo which is the capital of Norway before I transferred over to Tromso and when I got there it was minus 17 degrees Celsius then I kept flying north to get to here and it's actually warmer it's about minus is three degrees Celsius. The reason why Tromso is relatively warmer, especially in the wintertime, is because they're right in front of the water, which uh, for the Arctic, you really can't go wrong with minus three. It's not that much colder than where I'm from in Canada right now. So we're here day number two in Tromso, and we're just catching the sunset right now, believe it or not. The sun comes up over that mountain there, usually around 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. It stays up for about three hours and then slowly start to go back down over that mountain so I think if you were to go probably beyond that mountain get a little bit more sun but it's beautiful we got complimentary coffee in the morning in the hotel and uh, for today I just wanted to kind of sit uh, hang out right on the water and wait for our guide to come and get us but this is something else guys Now, unfortunately, even though you could find orca whales in every ocean in the entire world, in the last two decades, their numbers have been dwindling, which was a large reason as to why I went out onto this trip and tried to film these animals so that I could share them with as many people as I possibly could. Now, that is to say, with only one exception, where in one time of the year, between the months of November and January, in the most northern region of Norway, in the Arctic Circle, in the Arctic Ocean, you will find one of the largest migrations of orca whales, between two and 3,000 whales as they chase the Arctic herring during their migration. So my plan was simple. I wanted to spend four days on a boat in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, trying to get in the water with these whales and learning as much about them as I could from this man right here. This is Pierre Robert de La Tour, one of the foremost experts in orca behavior in the wild out of the entire world. So, just got to the orca fields here, um, on the boat, we're here on the Sula right now, met some friends from all different places, we actually got one Canadian with us right here, really quick guys, name and where you're from? Uh, Gavin from France, Jordan from Montreal, Vivian from Holland. So we have, I think there's like 20 of us on the two boats all together. The plan right now is to get settled in. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna wake up 7.55, eat breakfast, and then worry about heading out. And the last few days have been good. So I'm not gonna jinx it, but fingers crossed we get something cool to see. So we're actually here. I can't believe it. And this is night one on the famous MS Sula. It's, it's like surreal to be here right now. This took like months of planning. Um, and I slept for four hours on the bus, by the way, so it's like 1 a.m., but uh, it's kind of hard for me to fall asleep right now. This is my, my little room here. Got a bunk bed with a window, which you can't really see anything outside right now. And this is the rest of my room. Got a hanger for all my diving stuff. My space for my bag. And a little closet area there, so got everything that I need. Uh, the plan is to wake up early tomorrow 
Uh, we're gonna have breakfast at eight and then uh, we're gonna start diving after that. So we're gonna go to sleep for real now, but I uh, just wanted to check in. This is why you come to Norway. To that. <laughs> right there. So behind the scenes now, one thing that you guys didn't see with that whole orca encounter today is that I whacked my head, <laughs> fell on the boat, and smacked it right on a railing. So I just did some quick first aid and uh, patched myself back up. Sometimes it pays to, to be in medical school for helping yourself out. Um, but today was nuts. Today was crazy. I just spoke to the crew. And they said that this was the best day of orca diving that they've had the entire trip, like the entire season for the last year and well, three months that they've been diving now because that's how long the season lasts. And they said that you could come out four, five, six, seven times and not get a day like today. So that is well worth a little smack on the head. Doing good though. So that was that. Definitely one of, it was, it was the single best day diving that I've ever had in my entire life. I just want to wrap this video up with a few tips now for anyone making the trip themselves and then an interview that I got to do with Pierre, which was really nice. Now, first things first, what is it like to be in a situation like that? There was a moment, probably one of the most magical moments of my life to be in a bait ball with 30 feeding orcas all around you. We got incredibly lucky that day and there was a big, massive congregation that we had all feeding at the same time. And everything was happening so quick that the, the herring kept getting pushed right at us. And there were times where we were actually in the middle of like the bait ball, which is typically not a place that you want to be. Um, but it wasn't scary at all. I didn't feel really any fear being surrounded by the orcas. They would, there was just a, a time I could remember where there was orca sounds all around you. And you couldn't even tell where they were sometimes until it was too late and they were right in front of you um, because everything was so dark. But I remember there was a, a moment where this like big 20 or 24 foot orca just showed up right in front of me and kind of just locked eyes for a second. And I felt like like nothing. Like it, it was not a scary sensation at all. I knew that it could see me. I could see it. It wanted nothing to do with me. Um, and it was it was amazing. It kind of just turned around and went on its way. Um, you, you really have to see it for yourself. You you can't really advocate for these animals. I think until you're in an experience like that. Now, some rapid fire things. Point number two, it was freezing. It was freezing. And if anyone is making this trip at some point in the future, I would recommend not going in December. If you could avoid it, try and go in November. There's a lot more light. It makes 
videotaping and taking pictures a lot easier. In December, it's almost pitch black all the time, um, with the exception of two to three hours a day. And also it's a little bit warmer in November. I know um, when you're actually moving around and diving with the orcas, um, you're, you're nice and warm, you have your dry suit on and you feel like you're okay. It's those transitory periods where you're on the boats, the, the little Zodiac boat trying to chase after them. You are freezing um, by the water, you know, Arctic Ocean blowing right in your face, minus 10 degrees Celsius. And I will say that that is going to be the majority of your trip. In four days of diving, keep this in mind, well, three days of diving, we were only able to interact with the orcas on one day, one day out of three. So that's, that's what you should be expecting. And the last point that I want to say is that if you're looking for a dive operation, Orca Norway was amazing. The crew was very professional. Everyone's very well trained. They took great care of us. Um, the food was amazing. We ate three times a day. Um, there was a hot tub on the deck. Accommodations were great. And to any of the crew that are watching, to any of my friends from the trip, guys, thank you so much for one of the most memorable experiences ever. Now, outside of that, if you have any other questions about the trip, about orcas, I, I tried to spare you um, nerdy lectures from myself about going into all the different facts about them, but I'd love to talk about it in the comment section below if you have questions about anything. I promise you that we learned so much on this trip. Um, I'm not an expert by any means, but we got to learn from some of the best in the field um, when it comes to you know big animal interactions. And I I can't really ask for anything else. Um, this is the man himself, by the way, so we're gonna leave you with the interview from Pierre. So, this is Pierre. Pierre is the orca behaviorist here in Norway, probably one of the best in the entire world. And he's been nice enough to guide us on the trip for the last little bit. Just had a few questions for him, so thank you very much for sitting with us. Thank you, Jim. To tell them, how long have you been diving with orcas for? Uh, this year was my 23 years. 23 years. And yesterday was Pierre's birthday, actually. Yeah. We didn't know that, but the, the orcas were very nice to us yesterday. Yeah, we are really lucky. It seems that someone has prayed for orcas for my birthday, and this prayer has been listened by orcas. So they gave us a fantastic feeling. Maybe one of the best in my whole career. I have 6,500 underwater close encounter with orcas, and this one was among the best. Wow. Well, well, the biggest question that I had before I got here, for me, it was a very special thing to come over here. Why do you think people, in general, have such a connection for orcas? Why? What, what makes people come all from all over the world to come and see you and, and come and do this? I think it's a question of energy. Maybe some people that are connected with orcas and they feel the need to come and to meet the orcas, but not only to see the orcas from the top side, but also to go in the water, to enter in their own world, uh -huh. underwater world. And then you feel the connection. So I think that most of the people, they are dreaming since very, very young to dive with orcas, to swim with orcas, to be a part of a family and uh, and this is the place where you can uh, fulfill this dream. Yes. And, and for everyone that hasn't been out here to do this yet, right? People may be thinking about it at home and they want to come. What's something that you think people should know about orcas that they know, that most people don't know? Yeah, just know that it's not something very easy. It looks easy like this when you saw it on the social media because we are sharing the best. And sometimes it happens. But um, be careful with your own expectation. It's not going to be every day the best day ever. Sometimes we have to struggle. And today we struggle. And we struggle for nothing. I mean nothing. We are freezing like hell, like crazy in the small boat. Fingers and toes and everything. And the orca, they didn't gi give us... Um, uh, a single opportunity to die with them but at least we could see orcas from top side which is okay by the way but sometimes they you know they are locked they close the world and they don't accept us just a question of tolerance yes i've been diving in, in many places all over the world north america europe now and, and here now in the arctic ocean and i will say this is probably some of the hardest diving i've ever done in my entire life it was cold there's low conditions low light conditions the boats rocking back and forth but if you put in the effort and you come out here and you do it, then sometimes you're blessed with a lucky day like yesterday. Yeah, you have to be ready because it can happen anytime. Anytime it can come in like this and they open the window and uh, you have to be ready. If you're not ready, you miss this. If yes. you're ready, you get this. And thank you so much. Pierre has, you can, you can go look him up on, on YouTube. He has a whole bunch of different, different presentations that he gave us a few yesterday. So look into him and, and thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>